Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and Ting and Ting and Ting. Yes, I, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm back with another vibe for all you. Back with another vibe. And we won't keep on this uh, folklore stuff from the islands and thing. And this one is about the La Diablesse. This one is called TNT Folklore Part 4 La Diablesse. We say La Diablesse. We, sp we spell it this way too, but we spell it, I see, we spell it, also spell it just L A G A B L E S S E. La Diablesse. And uh, I actually wrote a book about the larger bliss, but it's uh, it's a whole fiction thing, and I create a whole story around it, and also it's kind of different there, because uh, every island you go have a different version of the story. But anyway, this this one is really short, so I'm gonna probably do a couple uh, of ones here. But anyway. Let me uh, let you get this one here, man. Let's YouTube and some simmer. The lads are blessed. Here it comes. In the country districts in Trinidad, particularly in a bygone day, the larger bless was very prominent. She was supposed to be a beautiful lady, well-dressed, and she would enter into a room or any scene where there are men, and men would fall for her, and they would pursue her. The right foot is a human foot. The left foot is an animal foot. You have a hoof made as an animal one. And when she walking on the road, you put the left foot in the grass and the right foot on the road. La Jabless, um, name suggesting devil, the devil woman. She has the traditional goat's cloven hoof, and that's a traditional way, again, it's European, of representing the devil. But it's the devil in an alluring female form. Usually she appears to drunk men, strangely enough, wandering home at odd hours in the night. She lures them astray when they look down at her feet. That goes for guys coming home high, too. <laughs> Smoke about a little ganji and take in your high. She gon' get ya. So when they hear the sound of the hooves, uh, they realize they are trapped. Again, you see, you see the same mythology operating in say a play like Dr. Faustus, one of the people that Dr. Faustus wants. When he makes his deal with Mephistopheles, the devil figure, is um, he wants to have Helen of Troy. Now, Helen of Troy, of course, is already dead and gone, so the devil fixes up a woman or appears in people's power because the result of that encounter is a, a loss of your soul. And maybe should question why it is this demon is supposed to appear in the alluring form of the, of, of the female. Whether the, the Europeans were expressing their fear of a female sexuality, for example, the notion that such sexuality was fundamentally evil. Usually, again, you have to think about tracks instead of roads, right? Gravel road instead of pitch road, no street lights, plenty bush. Bamboo patches and stuff like that. He would be escorting this lady home. When she, when they reached way, way, because everything was so sweet, he wouldn't notice where they were going and all this kind of thing. He would get the urge to smoke a cigarette. And when he tried to light it, she would discourage him. No, 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 but apparently smoking had a value in that particular situation. Because if the guy went ahead and struck that match, he would suddenly disappear in a big flash. The larger blessed character ultimately evolves out of the West African goddess of love, Izuli. She's the ultimate feminine, womanly beauty. The goddess of love becomes easily, when the stories are told, of the goddess of vengeance. The La Jabless is, is the revenge of the woman that was wronged by men. The man who beats the woman, who treats her badly, who makes her become small and mean, he is the man, that is the man that experiences ultimately the larger bless. See, that's another thing 
that is uh, predicated on real life stuff and people who are in situations that they can't really deal with, they create these folk laws to deal with it, a thing like that, you know what I mean? And uh, it's crazy how we do that, huh? Uh, which which kind of explains the conspiracy theories. Can't understand what's going on, so then we create it. We create these theories to explain what's going on, and we don't. We feel powerless to, to fix what the situation is. So we create something that make us explain why things are happening the way they happen. See how the human mind works. So back there, you got the back then you had the Lazar Bless and the and the Sukuyan, the Ligaru and all of that. Now we, I guess, the Lazar Bless of the Sukuyan, the Ligaru is the politicians. And the rich people back there it was the rich people also because you remember the the one with the uh, the was it the Sukunya? It was a rich older woman who inherited. See how all of that stuff kind of messed together the kind of food. You know that was kind of short. So I'm gonna do another one right now on that, and I'm gonna do one on the duet. And uh, this one is kind of cool here. So let's let, let's get in there and check that duet out. You know what I mean? This one is a. Uh, uh, Hold on, get this all set to get for you a little bit of tail. You get it all set to get This is the Dwin. Everybody and, knows all uh, of them. Let's get it back to the beginning. Right there. And this one is called the Dwin. Let's hear what they say. Everybody knows about Dwens. And everybody in the little villages scared about Dwens. You, you see his last name, Gonzalez? That just shows the multiculturalism on that island. There's East Indians, there's Asians, there's, uh, there's Africans, of course, which is, used to be the, minor, the majority. I don't think there's so much the majority anymore because the East Indians are sort of and there's a cause, of course, there's a middle ground where everybody's just meshed there. When I was a young guy growing up by St. Mad Cemetery, it had duens. It had duens all by the school because when we was going to school, we used to see them. It was like little children. We see them, when we tell your parents, we see them, they say it's duen, you see? They're just looking like ordinary little children, but the foot twists wrong. The duen is a little creature of the forest. He is supposed to be a young child who died before he was christened. And his objective, because his childhood is unfulfilled, his objective is to come and see other children and try and lure them into the world of duens. These duens, um, of course, they were supposed to be little toddlers, toddler size beings. They usually wore big umbrella hats. They look almost like giant mushrooms and their feet pointed in the opposite direction. Dwens again is one of those major control factors to stop your children from wandering off because uh, we were all told if you hear anybody calling you in the bush don't go and they always sound like children playing and making a sound like whoop, whoop, whoop. And laughter lots of laughter and so on so like the little children would hear this and go to investigate and it would keep receding and receding until the child disappeared. They are able to deal on the two poles. Few forces are able to stand up on the positive side and the negative side simultaneously. They can be on both sides whenever they want. Forces that I know of that can enter into these two spheres is twins, what people call Riri. If a child, a beautiful child, is born, and dies as after all infant mortality was huge everywhere in the pre-industrial world then again you you look for evil forces who snatched this child from you um, and so a world of taboos and things you couldn't do and fear of the unknown fear of danger fear of malevolent forces I think that would be part of the folk beliefs of virtually every pre-industrial rural folk. Obviously it would take different forms and here the dominant religion of the people would come in. So in predominantly Christian countries, then the folklore would be infused with Christianity. I have a theory and the theory is this. 
in the 1850s, Great Britain ran a blockade against Portuguese slave traders in the Atlantic Ocean. And several thousand Africans were taken off slave ships that were bound for Brazil, that was a Portuguese territory of the time. And they were brought to Trinidad. It is said that they brought with them a tradition of the spirits of children who had died in infancy. They came to Trinidad at a time when there was a series of very serious cholera epidemics and infant mortality was very, very high and many children died. And the story that came out of that was that if your newly born child became ill, you had to rush to have it baptized because if it died before it was baptized, it would become a type of living dead and haunt other children. Huh. I wonder who came up with that idea. Was it the former slaves or slaves if they were at the time, or was it the preachers or pastors or priests came up with that? Well, the priests, because it was mainly Catholicism down there, you know what I'm saying? Came up with that. You better rush to baptize your child, or you know, evil spirits shall take them. Wow. This stuff is bringing back some crucial memories, man. But you know, still fond memories. It's kind of amazing what I believed as a kid. I was scared myself sleeping as a kid. I mean, I never encountered anything. I scared myself a lot walking home. <laughs> and I mean, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a, this is a kind of funny example, actually. I remember when Protestant churches first started to come to the island heavy. And uh, they really pumped up the part of the Bible that says, during the end times, the full moon started to turn red. You know what I mean? So one night I was down the street blazing up with the fellas and thing, you know what I mean? And I'm coming home. I'm blazing as could be coming home. And I look up and the moon was kind of red, scared dash. Out of me. I mean, that day, oh my God, is this coming to the end? Of course, I'm not thinking right because, you know, the bubbly up in my head and thing, you know what I mean? And I, I was scared. I remember going to the house, opening the door, walking backwards, making sure no evil spirits are following me. I mean, and it's funny because I'm doing this, and this is an old Obia tale that if you walk backwards in the house, no spirits could follow you. But the story of the blood moon is a Christian thing. So here I am, subconsciously meshing the, <laughs> the Christian thing with the old time West African idea of things. How crazy is that, huh? All that stuff is so cool, man, you know what I mean? But anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. Remember to subscribe so you can get more of this vibe and thing, you know what I mean? Also, hit the notification button so you know when I put out new videos. Like, comment. I also have another book that I wrote. And these books are, you know, the, 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 the digital ones is just 99. I don't know how much paperback ones are because it's old books. I, I wrote these years ago. And uh, one of the very first characters that come in the, in the, 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 the second book that I wrote called Obia. Uh, and it's all fiction. So please, nobody drop no Obia on a brethren. It's all fiction. And, you know, I took uh, creative liberty and all that kind of stuff there. But... Uh, I'll link that in the bottom too if you want to check it out, you know what I mean, and thing. But uh, if you're looking for some fantasy stuff, and you see, I call it African mythology. What I should call it is West Indian, West Indian mythology because they mesh the Christianity with it. So I guess it's more West Indian mythology because it's sort of strayed from the, the traditional African uh, mean and do all these things, you know what I mean? And like they said in there, uh, I'll. Well, I did a lot of research to the world, write the books, right? And I realized that, uh, well, Obi and Voodoo, the gods and the goddesses were just like the Greek gods and goddesses. They have the goddess of the sun and the god of the sea and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So they, it all kind of messed together. But, you know what I mean? Check it out if you want to, you know what I mean? And thing. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep bringing those these here to you, you know what I mean? And I'm going to try to find some, you know, other stuff from Africa and maybe from Europe and stuff to bring to you. But in the meantime, now, 
subscribe and hit the notification button so you know when you know the vibe is coming up. I shouldn't have done this now because I already did it, so you know what to do. You know what to do. But anyway, make life cool, Ranins, huh? Eh?